Construction Champions, it's your host, Ron Nussbaum, and we're here for another amazing episode of Construction Champions Podcast, where we're burning down the house so we can rebuild it. That is what we do here on Construction Champions, is we give you the information that you need to go be the champion that you're meant to be. I'm super excited for today's guest. Chris, it is great to have you here today. Well, Ron, I really appreciate you having me on. <laughs> well, why don't you take a minute or two or however long you need to tell all the construction champions about yourself, what excites you, and what got us here to today? Sure. Um, so I'm a, uh, I'm a framing contractor. I uh, started framing right out of high school. I spent... Uh, Got out on my own at 20 years old. Got a contract to frame 20, 26 houses in one year. Um, so really early, had my own crew. Uh, spent the first 20 years wearing a tool belt every day, running jobs. Uh, moved from residential into multifamily. So 60,000 to 200,000 square foot buildings. Um, about four years ago, I decided to move from labor only into turnkey. So that is rather than just doing a labor contract, I started providing my own lumber material for the jobs that I was building. Um, that really, uh, that was a great springboard for growth in my business. We grew 1100% over the course of three years. We were on the Inc. 5000 list as the 539th fastest growing company in America recently. Um, so we're we're now Wisconsin's largest framing contractor. We're the fastest growing lumber material supplier in Wisconsin. Awesome, man. Such a rock star. Doing amazing things. And that's why, that's why I'm excited to have you on the show today. So I'm going to dive right in and ask the million dollar question. And that is, what makes a construction champion? Man, it's, uh, it's, uh, I don't know, it, you know, for me, it's, I always say, if you do what you say you're going to do, you're going to succeed in construction, right? So, so just, I mean, just keeping it that simple, uh, doing what you say you're going to do. Now, there's a whole lot behind that. Um, there's, <laughs> um, but, but at, at its core, when I, when I get a contract to deliver a building, um, uh, I, we build a four story building, frame it in eight weeks every time. So my general contractor customers ask me, how long is it going to take? I always say one week walls, one week floor, and we deliver that every single time. Now, how do we do that? Um, it's a lot of upfront planning. It's a lot of scope review. It's a lot of making sure we're on the same page with all the stakeholders. So, We've got employees, we've got subs that we use, making sure that everyone's clear on what their roles and responsibilities are and make sure the GC is clear on everything we need to be successful helps ensure that our schedule goes well in the way it should be. So, but at, at its core, we do what we say we're gonna do every time. It's so simple. But yeah, it so but so hard at the same time. I yeah, mean. yeah. Well, wow. you know, um, you know, for me, one thing, you know, I remember grinding my way through single family residential, where you get a contract for ten thousand dollars, and I get three buddies, and I'm going to pay them two thousand dollars each to build the house with me, and uh, so I get four grand. I got to pay for my crane. I got to pay for my nails, I might have to pay for some tools, gas, whatever, and whatever's left over is mine. And so kind of coming from that world, like, like, I get it, like, you're out there working hard every single day, trying to make sure that you're succeeding being out on your own. Um, to be able to step back from that and be more objective about how things are going is difficult. It's hard to get home at night after pounding nails all day for eight, nine, or 10 hours and sit down in front of your computer and make sure your proposal's written really well. 
right? Um, but man, I'll tell you what, the guys that you're competing with for work out there, those guys are dealing with the same thing. They get home at night and they're tired. Kids are kids want their attention. Wife needs their attention, whatever. Um, they might, they're, they're probably not sitting down and putting in the time at the desk. And so for me, a real change happened when I started learning how to how to write emails well, how to how to work my Excel spreadsheets, how to some bid templates, and just really putting in time there elevated me, and it eliminated the chaos that I that you know that usually comes along with construction. So it's it's time well spent. You get it back uh, tenfold. I love that, and I love the the fact that just talking about learning how to write an email something once again so simple yeah but something you have to if you can learn to do really well yeah you're you will get a 10x return probably even i mean we could say over the light a thousand x yeah. return yeah yeah and these and the guys and the guys that we're communicating with as sort of the guys in the field the guys doing the work ourselves we're talking with project managers, we're talking with construction managers and interacting with GCs that that are usually really busy, that are usually really stressed out. And so if I can communicate really well in an email, you know, hey, some guy tells me he wants to make a change. Well, I can choose how I'm going to respond. I can just respond by telling him there's here's X price, or I can see all the angles and give him the options. I'm going to help him understand where I'm coming from. I'm going to get my change order. It's not going to cause any stress. So um, trying to see things from that side and communicate on the level of the guys who are used to working in offices and, and you know, um, wearing the polos every day, that's, um, it's going to help you a lot, right? Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, everybody is stressed. Stuff, it, it can be stressful. It sounds like you have invested the time not only in your own growth, but also understanding how to put the systems in place to be able to grow your company. I would I would have to think you've invested in that if you're turning around in yeah. eight weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that didn't absolutely. happen by accident. <laughs> no, no, it didn't. Um <laughs> I, I, I spend a lot of time, I view my partners, uh, my vendors as partners. I view my general contractor customers as partners. I view my subcontractors as partners and I treat them all that way. And with the vendors in particular, um, I buy, I buy wall panels. I buy roof trusses. I buy floor trusses. I buy a lot of that. Um, I, I, uh, so last year I framed 1.5 million square feet. This year I'll frame 1.2 million square feet. I buy all of my wall panels and trusses from the same company. And and why? I could get different pricing. I could uh I could I could shop that around. But what's happened over the years is they've aligned their operation with my interests. And so if I'm getting floor trusses, they know that I want them sequenced. So they're coming to my job site in the order that I need to put them on the top plates, right? If I'm shopping around and I'm taking the cheapest price, I'm not necessarily getting that every time. It's going to cause chaos on the job site. And so those strong partnerships where uh, your vendors understand your vision uh, and and having a good, strong feeling for where things need to go help you dictate to everybody, every stakeholder, uh, what needs to happen. So absolutely. Another part of uh, my ability to grow, and I and I mentioned being becoming proficient at office operations, and I did that. And I learned uh, a lot of contractors run on QuickBooks. I learned QuickBooks. I got... I, I put in some time, I watched a bunch of YouTube videos, you know, did what I needed to do to learn it, right? And then at some point, it was, it to do it well and properly, it was taking a couple of hours every day. Well, I decided to hire an accounting professional as my employee, right? And so now it's, I spent 15 minutes approving invoices a day 
sending it off. I'm not working through the different the different softwares that all our general contractors are now getting into to get paid. My accountant's worried about that, right? And so, so be able to add to that. I think in I think in construction, when you're out on your own and you're small, we've got a tendency to be incredibly short sighted. And I I spent 20 years like thinking about like if I can build this house with three guys instead of four, I'm going to make, you know, a thousand more dollars. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I found that when I decided to spend the money to make the job go well, uh, it, it made all the jobs go well and I became more profitable over time. So. I love it. I I mean, that makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. I guess. What was the turning point? there because you talk about spending 20 plus years yeah it one way <laughs> now sure. i mean i'm guessing talking to you right now yeah. is a lot different than talking to you 10 years ago yeah yeah like, but what was that turning point that where you had like this i'm guessing aha moment that was yeah. like this is how i should do it what caused that i uh i got uh i needed a safety program and and so I uh, I called uh, I, I did an online search and I found the National Framers Council. Um, they had the tailored safety programs specifically for framers, and so I signed up and uh, and I and I got more and more involved with them. So they're a trade association, and it's uh, professional framing contractors. A lot of guys who build large multifamily, like I was building. Um, we actually had an event in Wisconsin and some of these guys came in from the mid Atlantic and Texas to this event. And I met these guys and they're, they're framers, but they're, they're professionals, right? (laughs) These guys have offices and staff, and this was in 2014. And so for me, that was really eye opening that, um, there's something beyond just wearing a tool belt, running 20 guys and keeping what's left over, um they were building like real businesses and the and and biggest differentiator was they were supplying their own material uh something that wasn't happening in wisconsin there were not any turnkey framing contractors in wisconsin uh before i started uh selling turnkey packages and so uh, in about 2017 i decided I, i need to learn how to buy and sell lumber and uh and and from there, the business has obviously taken off. Hmm. That's amazing. With just one looking for something as simple as a safety program, yeah, completely altered the business. Or it it made, I guess made it into a business. Like before, yeah. it was just kind of uh, you out there framing up walls, making a living, and yep. now you operate a business. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, it, that's exactly right. Um, it showed me what's possible, right? And if I hadn't, if I hadn't sort of reached out and looked beyond my day to day, thought beyond my day to day, wouldn't be here. Something you know, um, something that every guy who's out on his own can kind of maybe appreciate. I hope is that, um, you know. I, I was just this, I was just, I mean, I was framing contractor for years, years. And uh, I don't know, I, I kind of, I like to think that what I've, what I've done with my business and the way I've grown my business isn't so far out of reach for the guys out there who want it. If you want to dedicate yourself to growing, doing things better, um, it's, I mean, it's right there for you. And, and you know what? We talk about uh, the housing crisis, the need for more homes, need for more affordable homes. I think I think in construction as an industry overall, being more professional and bringing more professionalism to our day to day is going to help bring down costs. Is going to help streamline production, um, and 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 mitigate 
price risk for all, everybody involved, right? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, I mean, I would have to say it's hard either way. Like whether you want to be professional about it or not, you're choosing your hard and too many guys will make excuses on why they don't want to go the the hard route of actually setting up, having a business, being that champion because construction is business. We just happen to be building things instead of managing spreadsheets and everything on a daily basis. But yeah. that stuff has to happen within a construction business for it to be successful. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think we can change our focus, you know, as a, I would say every framer's favorite pastime is criticizing other framers. Right? <laughs> it's um, so we're always looking down the street and seeing what that guy's doing. No, oh, he had his, he held his headers up to the double tops and, or, you know, and I do it this way, that way. Well, let's, let's start looking a little bit more at beyond. Let's take pride in things beyond the craftsmanship which the craftsmanship is what I absolutely love about it. But being pri proud of the professionalism you can bring to your trade uh, will, will help you so much. I love it. And so for the guy, because I know this is happening out there, because I've heard this a thousand times, I'm sure you have as well, is there's some guy listening right now that's saying, man, Chris, Chris is just different. He... It, he's special there there what do you say to that person that to, well, I, to get them over the hump that you know you don't have to be special to go build something special well because I, I could start out by saying i, I barely graduated high school <laughs> you know i wasn't i wasn't a great student by any means and and uh um it's it's taken us it's taken a thousand tiny steps towards what i wanted and having a vision um and man i'm like i said i'm no different than than the rest of the guys out there i just knew what i wanted and i and i kept focused on that so um it's 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 in all of us and i and you know i i think we as tradesmen uh we we've got this we've got this skill set and uh, we're craftsmen and there's a little bit of an art to the thing that we things that we do whether you're mason you're a framer uh, a trim guy a drywaller doesn't matter um, and and the rest of the world we're interacting with doesn't have that they don't have that skill set they don't have the appreciation for what we're doing and that's an advantage that we have uh, over all the rest of them, um, being able to take that and wrap it into a real business, you're going to be able to be better than everyone else out there. So. I love it, man. Yeah. You're, you're, uh, you're amazing. You're, you, ah. you tell a great story. You've been there. You've lived it on both sides. That's what I love about your story is that sure. it's not, just started out and built this business. You grinded it out for a long time and then realized it could be more. Mm -hmm. uh, if if you're open to talk about it, I would be interested in because what I don't think we hear enough about is what are some of the, the dreams and stuff that you've been able to realize over the past few years as this stuff has started to work for what yeah. you put in motion? What are, what are some of those benefits and stuff that you've been able to realize that will continue to drive your success here. Yeah. So, um, you know, when I, when I first started selling, uh, one of the things for me was being able to be able to sell the lumber and be profitable there has allowed me to take my labor contracts and almost pass through that money. And so I'm paying I'm paying top wages for the best carpenters. I have the best subcontractors. I have the best equipment. Um, so being able to be able to make sure having the income to ensure that the guys out in the field are the best guys available has been great and amazing. I've got 125 guys 
And anybody who runs a crew of 10 guys or more knows the potential for chaos there, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so that's been great. Um, you know, you buy the equipment stuff is fun being able to, you know, shop and find, you know, get all terrain forklifts. Um, we, we built our own shop three years ago. Uh, we've decided to expand recently and we broke ground a month ago on a 100,000 square foot lumber yard. We're adding a 10,000 square foot building and office space, uh, to that. And so, um, Man, that was absolutely a dream for me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and and beyond that, being able to, I, I mentioned I wasn't a great student in school. I didn't have a lot of confidence, right? Um, I was really good at framing and I was good at it right away. And so framing gave me the confidence that I needed to be successful in life. And so be able to put myself out there, come on your podcast, and try to talk to other framers and improve and give back to my industry, um, man, that really drives me. That really motivates me. Um, one of my roles, uh, I'm on the board of directors for the Structural Building Components Association. So they're, they're the association that dictates the installation of wood roof and floor trusses in North America, right? Um, any framer out there, has seen the colorful packets that we get with the trust deliveries, the installation instructions called the BCSI. And any framer out there who's opened it up and read it um, will say it's almost impossible to actually do that work <laughs> per the instructions. Um, at the moment, I'm on a committee that's revising the building component safety instructions, the installation instructions for wood roof trusses. So being able to be a framer at that table and have our voice heard, um, man, it's like, I feel pretty lucky that I get to be one of very few people who influences that. And, and once that new document is published, it's going to affect every framer in the country in the way that we install wood roof trusses. So that's been, a, that's probably one of the more rewarding things that's come with the growth of my business. Amazing. And yeah. Chris, I would say, there's no luck involved. I mean, there, there's probably a little bit, but I mean, you created the opportunity for this stuff to happen. And now sure. you can, you can influence an entire industry and in what that looks like with the experience you have is absolutely amazing. And it's why I love having guests like you on the show. So, I mean, thank you for taking the time out of your day to do this. Of course. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's, it's a pleasure. Um, yeah. So for all the construction champions out there that are listening, if they wanted to follow you, connect with you, do any of that, where's learn more about everything that you're doing. Where, sure. Where's the best places for them to do that? I'm uh, I'm very active on LinkedIn. So uh, Chris Tatchy on LinkedIn, uh, otherwise uh, at framer, Chris on uh Twitter. Um, uh, you can Google search DC materials. My contact information's on there. And, and this is not a platitude. It's not a nicety. If you're a framing contractor who wants to learn how to do things better, you should call me. You should email me. You should get in touch. I'm not selling consulting services. I'm just some guy who's benefited a lot and I'm happy to help anyone. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, I would second that if you're in the framing industry and you're wanting to go somewhere that you should probably be talking to Chris. So like that to me would only make sense, but Hey, I'm just this guy over here. So once again, thank you for being on the show today. Thanks for having me, Ron. I really appreciate it. All right. Construction champions, another episode full of great information. And let's go back to where we started. Like it is, it, it is super simple as you're getting started out there to just do what you say you're going to do. Like follow through on that, build that reputation because that is going to scale faster than anything. And, you know, we live in this world where everybody wants to talk about scale and growth. Well, a bad reputation with scaling the wrong way, 
faster than anything you can possibly have. And all that is, is just do what you say you're going to do. Or what I like is like, don't say you're going to do stuff you can't do. <laughs> like there, there's a happy medium there. And then understand that you can always continue to grow. Listen to what Chris taught 25 years framing and he saw an opportunity. He saw a vision. He understood that this could be bigger than anything that he had thought it could be. And instead of just saying, nah, I'm not the guy, he went, I am the guy. I should have that business and went out and built it. When a lot of guys 25 years into it are going to be like, this is how I've been doing it for 25 years. Not going to be changing that. So don't ever write yourself off as this is where I am. This is what I'm capable of because we're all capable of continuing to get better. You're listening to this podcast because you want to be a construction champion. I feel like Chris's story today has been one of the most impactful ones we've had. This is episode uh, 95. So talk to 95 different individuals. And I feel like this is a very impactful story for everybody to hear. Because he takes accountability for where he was at, what he has done, able to change that and continue to grow. And I have no doubt we can talk to Chris in another 10 years and it's going to be bigger than any of us could probably imagine. Anybody listening, myself, probably even Chris, he probably has a grasp on, not probably, I know he has a grasp on where his company's going in the next 10 years, but I think we'll all be really, really surprised. And we could all do that. Everybody that's listening right now in the next 10 years could completely change their life. And the outcome for them, their family, Chris talks about having the best employees, paying the best wages, having the best equipment. How many of you out there want to do that? Because I'm pretty damn sure it's every one of us want to do that. And it is possible. So Construction Champions, make sure you go join our Construction Champions Facebook Mastermind Group, something like that. I mean, I made the group. I should know the name of it, but uh, it's completely free. We're connecting guests, listeners, everybody. It's a place where we can come be champions here out there. Make sure you check out our sponsors. And until next time, be the champion you were meant to be.